Hey, welcome back to That'll Do Garage. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'd like to show you uh, how I'm going to order up my Ford Bronco. Show you my preferred uh, options of choice, I guess, some of my must-haves. And kind of walk you through the logic behind some of my choices. And I'd also like to share with you um, a couple of resources I've found for learning about the Bronco and kind of you know, feeding my addiction to the idea of the Bronco right now while I wait for um, the actual Bronco. Well, as you can see, we're here on Ford's website. Um, I'll share all these links down in the video description below so you can take a look. But this is where you'd begin to uh, order up your 2021 Bronco. There's all the different uh, various models here, and each one has, you know, strengths and weaknesses. I think if you uh, grab one of these first editions and option it all the way up, it's like $85,000. So that's a good time. Um, but I started looking at the Bronco. I was thinking, I just want the cheapest Bronco. And I, I did a lot of optioning and playing with this um, website with the base model here. But I found out about a couple things that are must-haves for me. And that the first must-have is a manual transmission. I just think that's a totally different driving experience and I really enjoy it. The second must-have is the Sasquatch package, which I'll show you in a minute. It comes with the 35-inch tires and the differential locks and all sorts of cool stuff. And the third must-have um, is the enhanced trail maps navigation system which is really cool and i'll show you the detail on that too but that basically only comes in the mid-level uh, trim package for the interior features and so that means you know the mid is not available on the base it's only available on the big bend and up um, so i'm going to have to do my build with the big bend model here to keep the price as low as i can so we'll go ahead and select start your build now this is where you get to kind of play with everything with your virtual Bronco here. Click through the pictures and you can sort of take the doors off or whatever. It's just kind of fun. Um, oh, and, and another thing to note here is these are the 2021 colors. Now don't forget there's a 2022 is, is having some different colors. And there's actually detail in here about um, some, some new colors. So this is their new color. It's called Eruption Green. And this was announced um, on, on one of these resources here that I referenced. This is called the Bronco Nation. And this was a, uh, a Ford Bronco community that was actually sponsored and endorsed by Ford Motor Company. So they get a lot of kind of insider info and they're always uh, escorting the Broncos around at all the shows and everything. But this is one of the first um, resources that I found when I started learning about the Bronco. And this was the first place I learned about the new color. So I'm very excited about that. I was quite sad that there wasn't a green option for me uh, other than the cactus, which is kind of green. But I love this color. So I'm definitely going with the uh, Eruption Green for the 2022. I'm super excited about that, really. There's a couple colors that are going away as well, um, which is all detailed in here. Antimatter Blue, Lightning Blue, and Rapid Red um, are going away. But, you know, change is good, I guess, right? <laughs> uh, so I will be selecting the 2022 color of Eruption Green here. And then if you can play with the wheels you want and so on, honestly, I don't really care what kind of wheels I get. I just care more about the tires. So I come down here and I select um, the, the bigger tires. And the first thing that pops up is, okay, you want your 35-inch tires? That means we're going to add the Sasquatch package. And what is the Sasquatch package? Well, if I click this little icon here, it shares with me. Okay, we got 17-inch beadlock capable wheels. Changes the final drive ratio uh, along with a typo there, which I think is funny. Changes the final drive ratio um, in, in both axles to 4.7 to 1. And it adds the electronic front and rear uh, differential locks. You also get a slight suspension lift from the factory. I want to say it's like 1.5 inches, something like that. And then you get bigger extended fender flares to cover those bigger tires, which are 35-inch tires. 
So that is that is the pretty cool thing for me uh, with the Bronco. I mean, I, I'm excited about Ford and I'm excited about the Bronco, but really it's the Sasquatch package that seals the deal for me. I did, I, I will admit, I did go look at a Jeep uh, just to see because for Pete's sakes, I'm not going to get this thing until like the summer of 2023. And I was kind of bummed about that. So I went and looked at a Jeep Wrangler uh, Rubicon and what could I order and is it cheaper and so on. And I found they're pretty comparable. Um, but the Jeep never gets you up to a 35 inch tire. I think the biggest one that they offer is a 32. And that's a big deal to me. I love the idea of having bigger tires and factory support. You know, that means the brakes are going to be designed to handle 35-inch tires, the steering components, the suspension components. All that stuff will be, um, you know, factored in and considered when they're designing the, the Bronco. So that is my first must-have is the Sasquatch package. Um, now, the 2021 does not offer the Sasquatch package with a manual transmission. So as we get farther down, you'll see um, that I have to select the automatic. But... Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I really like this tool. You can spend a lot of time just playing around with options. And then down here, um, we immediately get into the roof options. And, and this has been a controversial topic for Ford. You know, these molded in color tops, uh, they've had a lot of problems with the vendors and, and getting sufficient inventory to work on these hard tops. So that has been a big reason for a delay. Um, and I do want a hard top. But honestly, I don't want my, my hard top to make the Bronco be two years later or whatever. Um, you know, there's also some stories of folks who are getting their Broncos now and they're having issues with interior panels delaminating um, and, you know, some concerns with the Bronco. So it's just a big question mark. I think what I'm going to do is order the hard top and wait for that, even if it takes extra time because it's super easy to add a soft top later. You know, if I order it with a soft top, it's much more difficult to add a hard top. Ford has even said shipping for a, just a hard top is going to be thousands of dollars. Uh, so I'm hesitant to order a soft top and say I'll order a hard top later. I think I'm going to go the other way around. And the other reason for that is sometimes when you order things from the factory, you know, it doesn't explicitly say if you order the hardtop, you also get like the wiring harness for the rear uh, window washer system or the rear window defrost. But but that's a part of the hardtop package. And so if you don't order that, if you order the soft top, your Bronco is not going to be equipped with that rear window defroster harness you know and rear wiper setup um, un unless Ford did make a specific um, av availability of that harness for some of the customers that are frustrated right now but so there's 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 pros and cons there if you don't order the option the supporting equipment might not be installed and if you try to add it later you might be frustrated that it wasn't there you know like for the receiver hitch if you don't order Ford's receiver hitch the wiring for your brake controller um, and trailer lights will not be in place. But if you order Ford's hitch, it'll be there. So I'm tempted to order a lot of Ford accessories just for that reason. So um, to recap, I'm going to go with the 35-inch tires in the Sasquatch package. I'm probably going to get the hard top. As of now, they, Ford has been including uh, free hard top sound deadening headliner material because they're, they want to say, hey, we're super sorry about the delays. But I don't know how long that'll continue. Probably won't roll into the 2022. So moving on down the line, um, we get down to this fun bumper stuff. And I really like um, the, the metal bumper over the plastic bumper. It's an additional 800 bucks, but you know, I think it's, it's worth it to me because this metal bumper enables um, more options further down, which are these front steel bash plates, which I really like, um, and the brush guard, which is my favorite part. This brush guard here, um, I've heard this referred to as the B and O brush guard, because that's all you see <laughs> is the B and the O. Um, the new brush guard is actually uh, changed to be a little bit lower 
it, it's more along the line of this line in the grill here so you don't block the the Bronco lettering but that's pretty neat so the, those are some more things I'm going to order um, the the modular bumper the bash plates and the brush guard I'm going to skip the, the all this other stuff here because it just ends up adding more cost I would like remote start um, that's a big deal here in Minnesota but the remote start right now only comes with the automatic transmission which is a, a no-go for me so I'll sacrifice the remote start if I have to I am expecting this to change um, when the 2022 options start showing up and that brings us to another uh, resource so th this first resource I mentioned was Bronco Nation and again I'll, I'll include the the links in the description uh, the second resource here is called Bronco 6G which stands for sixth generation and this here uh, was a, a really big day for me as well when I learned that I will be able to order my 2022 Bronco uh, September 13th and that's kind of all over the internet now so I pretty much trust this date also um, my dealership called me a couple days ago and they said hey are you still interested in a Bronco and I said you betcha I am um, I said I'm planning to order it on September 13th and he said yep that's what we understand as well so I have an appointment with them as soon as they open the doors on the 13th I'm going to be knocking on their door trying to order my Bronco um, so this is a, another resource the Bronco 6G there's a ton of stuff here and you know the thing I like about this is you get a lot of uh, personal comments right it's not like all professional grade it's not all official from Ford it's like a lot of folks from around the country commenting on on the real deal what the truth actually is but according to this I'll be able to order in September they will be scheduling in October and actually start production in December so that's why my optimistic uh, um, estimate is that I'll have this thing in like June or something uh, just based off of what I'm seeing from from the rest of the people who have ordered up Broncos so we got Bronco Nation and we got Bronco 6G um, and, and that kind of tells you a little bit about the options here that's why this is all still 2021 because you can't order a 2022 yet um, and believe me I've tried I'm probably going to roll with whatever the standard interior is. Honestly, I don't really care about that. I'm not going to get into the fancier trims with the leather and stuff. It just gets too expensive for me, so I'm not going to do that. Um, I'll roll with whatever they give me. I'm going to pick up a couple of these little accessories as well just for the fun of it. I heard um, one guy, you know, I, I did have my eye on this cargo protector. It's basically just a mat that lays in the back. Um, but one guy was telling... Um, on the forum that this isn't the best material and he actually found it getting scuffed and and kind of worn out So so maybe I won't pick that up. We'll see But you know that brings me to another point of discussion. I'm having trouble Struggling with this issue in my head if I order options from Ford You know like the hard top or like the receiver hitch I get the wired accessories and the supporting accessories that come with it but it obviously increases the price. Um, you know, I could probably get a receiver hitch from some aftermarket vendor for significantly cheaper than I can get it from Ford. Um, but it begs the question, how do I pay for this stuff, right? If I can add a, a, a winch to my Bronco from Ford, sure, it's 1200 bucks or something like that, and might add $10 to my monthly payment or whatever the math works out to be. But that might be easier than going to pay 1200 bucks, you know, for a winch from a different vendor outside of Ford. It's easier for me to roll in the cost into the financial thing um, than to come up with the cash. So I'm trying to consider that as well. Probably would be able to swing the $120 for the cargo area protector, but who knows. So uh, this is another fun thing here, these auxiliary switches in the overhead console. I really like the factory fit and finish of these. Um, these probably wouldn't even be wired to anything for me for quite a while, but if I wanna add some lights down the road uh, or a air compressor or a 12 volt fridge, something like that, um, it would be really nice to have these factory switches. So I'm tempted to do that as well. It's not that much money. I'll probably add those switches. So let's go with uh, the cargo protector just for the fun of it. 
will go with these auxiliary switches. And then the other thing is these bags. I think this is pretty neat about the Bronco, these, these storage bags. You can take all the doors off, put it in the bag, and they all fit right in the back. They don't get scratched. You know, when you take the doors off a Jeep, it's sort of like, well, now what do I do with this thing? You know, I got to leave it in my garage or leave it at the trailhead or something. Um, and that's not awesome. So in this way, you can take them out or take them off, put them in their bags, plop them right back in the Bronco, and you still have them at the other end of the trail or whatever the case may be. So those um, are tied to the hardtop selection, and I will probably be getting the front and uh, the front panels and doors um, option. Three hundred bucks again. I think I can swing that. So down here, this is the cool stuff, right? This is what I'm really excited about. This is the uh, the audio and the navigation equipment. So the Ford has done something really cool with this. I'm very excited about it. And again, I learned about it on Bronco Nation. So the hub or the foundation of it is the Ford Pass performance app. Um, and this is tied to your phone and the Bronco and everything. But basically what you're looking at here is, is like the Bronco's... Um, infotainment screen in maybe an Apple CarPlay mode and the cool thing here that I'm really excited about is these trail maps okay so this is some guy that made some maps don't worry about it but what the Bronco is gonna have is this trail maps feature where you can actually um, track your route on the trail with waypoints and GPS coordinates you can upload video you can have um, comments on the trail like this uh, section was was washed out so go the other way around the tree and you can have all of this in your profile in in your trails app and you can share all that with the community um, so also the cool thing is I could pop into my Bronco hook up my phone and say find me a trail around here you know maybe it's a Saturday I have four hours to kill find me a trail that I can drive to, get through. Um, you, you can, like right here, there's an estimate of the trail length, how long it takes you, what the elevation change is, good times to go on the trail, a few photos. Um, this is all so cool to me. I just love this idea. Um, and, and you can also leave, I think they call it breadcrumbs. So even if you don't have GPS or, or a cell signal, you can drop these, these breadcrumbs and kind of waypoints that help you navigate without a signal. It's so cool. I'm really excited about that. I just have this, this vision of, of jumping in my Bronco saying, show me a trail seven hours away and just bombing out there on a Saturday, run the trail a couple times, you know, sleep in the back of my Bronco, um, and then drive home and upload this to the community, upload this to my YouTube channel. I just think it'd be really fun to share. Um, and the Bronco has a lot of cameras built into it as well. So there's certain points when you're tooling along the trail that you can actually turn on like your front camera and show the Bronco going over an obstacle. Um, and you can share that then in your profile. You can share this video of you driving through the, uh, the trail. And I just think it's the greatest thing ever. Um, and, and in different places, I found it'll overlay... Um, some critical information for the Bronco too, like what gear you're in or the um, telemetry for the suspension, you know, is your front differential locked or not, and so on. It kind of overlays that on the screen and, and will show that as you upload your video. So I'm really excited about that. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, and again, this was on the Bronco Nation website. So really fun stuff. I'm very excited about that. But what you want to do there is, I, I think it's this um, built-in navigation option. So select that and it'll say, oh, I'm going to bump you up from just your six speaker audio uh, to the mid package right here, which is another 2100 um, bucks. And that's why I'm getting the big bend, just because that mid package isn't available on the base. So I am going to order the four-cylinder um, for a couple of reasons, but the main thing is um, the manual transmission and 
the power you get out of this thing is very impressive to me. It's a four cylinder, but you're still getting 275 horse on standard octane or 300 horse on premium fuel. And I had a F-150 with a 5.4 liter V8 that made 300 horsepower and that thing got like 12 miles to the gallon, you know? So um, I'm just really excited about this little four cylinder uh, putting out 300 horse, I think it's going to be great. And sure, I could upgrade to the 2.7 and get some more torque. That'd be fun. But for me, it's just not necessary. Um, so that's kind of how I'm building my whole Bronco. What are my must-haves? And is an extra 10% horsepower really going to be a must-have for an extra 1800 bucks? To me, no, it's not. Um, so I'm going to go with the four-cylinder. And as I mentioned earlier, you can't really pick the manual here. It's not an option on the 21, but it will be for the 22. Not super um, passionate about the four-wheel drive thing, the four-wheel drive system. I, I trust the system. I see the goat mode, um, you know, marketing all over the place, and it's pretty neat. goes over all terrain or any terrain. Um, and I trust the computers, but frankly, I just want to lock the differentials, put it in first gear uh, crawler, gear and let the clutch out and go two miles an hour i'm so excited about that it makes it feel like a tractor you know um so I, i'm an, i'm geeking out on that but so these are the two locking differentials front um, rear locking differential and then the front is also included um, and it changes the gear ratio to 4.7 to compensate for the bigger tires that comes with the sasquatch package and this is um, what i described above this is the mid package and it includes all that navigation stuff and, you know, power outlets and all those kind of things. So that'll be fun. And then, and then this is, um, so this is what I selected. And I do usually click this when I am playing with the, with the configurator here. Um, I don't know if I'll do that or not, mainly because what I've heard is the more options you get, the more likely you are to experience a delay. So I want to kind of drop the options as much as I can um, to save cost and minimize delay. So then you come down here and you can kind of see now, here's a, here's a rundown on what I've picked, right? And it specifies all the options I selected. Um, there's a couple more accessories up in here that I generally skip over. There's, there's a lot of lights and, you know, you can change your wheels and you can get like a roof rack and all this stuff, but none of that really speaks to me. Um, I do tend to go back and forth on the uh, ARB air compressor, which is cool when you're lowering down the tire, the tire pressure. It would be great to have a nice, robust um, air compressor that you can trust to, to fill your tires back up. But I'll probably buy an aftermarket one on that. Um, so that's where I'm at. I do this like once a week. I'm on this website and I just play with things and I look around and I play with the calculator. And um, the other thing about the, the calculator is I don't really trust these numbers because I, I've heard a lot of different variation in, um, you know, the dealers are offering incentives or they're not offering any incentives. I even heard one uh, guys say that there will be no lease option because it's so popular, um, which doesn't make any sense to me because why would it be here if they're not going to lease it? But anyway, I am planning to lease this thing um, purely to get the monthly payment down. And this will be the first time I've leased a vehicle, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Some people swear by it. If you watch this, 466, you go to finance, 850. Holy buckets. I can't swallow that. I can swallow that. And yes, I understand that I'll be paying more in the long run and interest and I'll have to go get a car loan anyway when my lease is up. I get it. But it's all about making this happen for me and 850 is just too much for me to swallow right now. So, But this is where I'm at. I love this thing. I can't stop thinking about it and I just wanted to share it with you guys. Um, this is the color I will be going with in the four-door version, probably with the hard top. I encourage you to check out the Bronco Nation. Um, it's a really good website. They have a really um, large amount of good information and uh, helpful tips and cool articles and how-tos. Um, and I would also encourage you to check out the Bronco 6G. It's, it's a lot of real-world people and their comments. Um, 
So that's pretty much it. I uh, just wanted to share all this stuff with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to comment and let me know what you're going to do with your Bronco or, or maybe why you do want to buy a Bronco or you don't want to buy a Bronco. Um, it's really it's really a cool kind of community and, and I'm super excited to be a part of it in the future. So anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.